Still no contact after that K-1-1? Uh, negative 649. Probably a false alarm, but uh, Sergeant says you should check it out. We're there in about five minutes. We'll let you know. Roger, 649. You ever been to the Hartleys? No, I've only seen it from a distance. Get to pay the light bill? Not likely. It looks empty. Somebody shot. Uh huh. And they left the door open. Police! Anybody home? Here. Someone's out there. You yeah, check for anyone who needs assistance. I'll call for backup. Got it. Seem better to me. Yeah, two hours after you release him, he's naked chasing buses down Market Street. Yeah, but this time he didn't think he was Ed Sullivan. Oh, progress. Mm -hmm. Did you admit that patient on A West? Oh yeah, yeah, he was hearing voices, acting out violently. Well, besides that, he's a heck of a nice guy. Oh, I'll bet maybe we should all go camping sometime. It'll be okay. I'm giving him Caldol Akavan. Ooh, no problem. Sack the mundo. Man, I'm beat. I have been here for 14 hours. Mm, ten more hours, you can go home. If you're lucky, maybe you catch a nice quiet evening. <laughs> maybe not. What have we got? Coming in now, possibly responsible for a multiple homicide. Put a cop in the yard. 
She's non-responsive verbally and physically. Her name is Sharon Hartley. She's 16 years old. She looks like Carrie after the prom. Uh, where are parents? We're going to need them for consent for admission. They're dead. The police found them in the basement or what was left of them. No, wait on that. It's all right. I can see you're pretty upset. I'm not going to let them hurt you anymore. Do you understand? Don't be afraid. I'm here. All right? I'm, I'm going to stay with you. And I'm going to help you relax. Okay? Give it to me. Come on, honey. Give it to me. Good girl. Good girl. That's it. That's it. Okay. 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 Nice and easy. We're going to walk to the next room. We're going to go real slow. They're in the basement. Anybody touch me? No, sir. Corner took a temp, that's all. Mutilation occurred after they were shot. <clears throat> Where was the girl? Upstairs. She took the shotgun up with her. <sighs> nice to grow up rich, isn't it? Sharon Hartley, medical record T6130. Patient remains uncommunicative, having difficulty obtaining school and medical records from the police, but will continue to pursue this. After responding to a 911 call, police discovered the bodies of the famous millionaire industrialist and his wife. Police have taken their teenage daughter, Sharon, into custody. She is being held for questioning at the moment concerning the shock. Help you. More later. Right, we're right.
I wouldn't go down there. It's not a pretty sight. Can I help you in some way? I'm Laurel O'Connor. I'm the psychiatrist assigned to Sharon Hartley. And you are? Julius Ashmore, the district attorney. Pleasure to meet you, Dr. O'Connor. But isn't this a bit out of your venue? Sometimes I find it helpful to see where a patient lives, especially when I'm having difficulty obtaining information about them. What do you need? Well, for starters, uh, school records, medical histories. Are you aware that your office has denied access to all of them? I'll, I'll take care of that. Sometimes people in the office get a little low, overzealous. Thank you. Do you know Frank Bowden? No. I want you to meet him. Dr. O'Connor, may I introduce Frank Bowden, the attorney for Richard Hartley? How do you do? Dr. O'Connor, I'd like to thank you for everything you're doing for Sharon. We're doing everything we can. Mr. Ashmore, I didn't expect the top man to be out here today. Well, this is a rather high-profile case. Richard Hartley, one of the most prominent citizens in this area, and his wife are dead. Apparently murdered by the attractive daughter. I think apparently is a good word to keep in mind. Well, as a family's chief counsel, you should probably be finding a good criminal lawyer. I hear you want to try her as an adult. She's barely 16. Which gives us the option. <sighs> this is a particularly heinous crime, Doctor. Have you seen the bodies? Did you see what she did to her parents? So what have you got? Two dead bodies. Only other person in the house was the daughter. She was covered in their blood. Her bloody fingerprints were all over the murder weapon. She attacked a police officer, hurting badly. Sound like someone innocent to you? What about the man that the police saw running from the house? I've had Detective McGregor lead the evidence team, checking footprints left in the wet soil. That man didn't get within 100 yards of the house. How do you put it together? Shotgun came from the cabinet downstairs. I think she surprised him in the dining room. Shot them. 12-gauge does quite a job. Tore the place up. I mean, there were wild shots all over the place. Dragged the bodies down to the basement. Needleated them. I'd That's be very when... curious to hear what her motivation would be for all this. Do you want to know how much she's worth now? Mr. Bowden can tell you. You know, Doctor, um, I wouldn't want to rush you. But everyone is very eager to get this case moving. And your initial report will have great bearing on how the judicial system will deal with Sharon. I understand that. Good. I think people want to see justice done. As we all do. I'll call your office about those reports. Mr. Bowden. Dr. O'Connor. <clears throat> I'm Thomas McGregor. I'm heading up the investigation here. How do you do? I apologize if uh, you've had any trouble getting the information you need. Is there anything I can help you with? Well, thank you. Uh, yes, did you have a chance to speak with the officer who first discovered Sharon? Yeah, I did. After they stitched him up. Yes, I know that she attacked him, but I was wondering if he told you what she said, if anything, or how she acted. No, he doesn't know what hit him. He does think, though, if the sergeant hadn't arrived, she would have killed him, too. I see. Well... Thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. You bet. <clears throat> you need anything, you give me a call. Thank you. Pick up line two, please. Mr. Stanley, pick up line two. How is she? I don't know. I just stopped in. The nurse has said she's been staring like that for the last five hours. How things go with the DA? Oh, they just want it to be over with. Truth be damned. If they were human, they wouldn't be lawyers. 
Yeah, but I got news for him. They're not going to try someone who doesn't even know she's in a courtroom. Have they figured out that you might not be a team player? Like it's dawning on them. I'm concerned she may have had a psychotic break, possibly the onset of a schizophrenic pattern. Could be right. Something pushed her over. No other family, anyone else we could talk to? No one I can locate. I don't think you get any more alone in the world than this girl is right now. What is it? Look at her mouth. I'm here to see Dr. O'Connor. Yes, go right in. Dr. O'Connor, is Mr. Bowden here to see you? Oh, great. Tell him I'll be out in a second, please. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. No problem. I'm having a problem getting some information on Sharon's family history. I thought maybe you could help. Sure. What do you need? Well, anything really. Uh, family background, medical histories. Does she have any other relatives? No. Both parents were only children. That makes me the responsible party. Are you okay with that? I'm fine with it. Hey, Dr. O'Connor, ask you a question. Excuse me. Sorry to bother you. Just take a second. What can I do for you, Stan? I, it's just that I was... I, I'm feeling real good. I, real good. So I, I was wondering when I'm going to get out of here. I mean, when do you think that I should be able to get out of here? Because I think I'm fine. Well, the nurses tell me you haven't really been sleeping. Oh, I don't sleep much. No, I don't, really, I, don't, I never slept much. Well, they say you haven't been sleeping at all. You know, I'll stop by in a bit, and we'll talk about it. Sure, sure. But, 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 but I'm feeling really good. I think I ought to be out of here. I, 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 I mean, I think I'm ready. We'll talk about it, Stan. Okay, fine. i got to get out before the race. Want to get a cup of coffee? Sure. Okay. What race? America's Cup. I talk with them for two minutes and get all ready. I can't stand it. Ashmore can be tough, and it's no show. The man is very bright. He's got some good people working on the case. You know Detective McGregor? Our paths have crossed. A good cop. Personally, I don't like him. Why is that? A few months ago, some questions were raised about some things at the Hartley Corporation. As a company lawyer, I was involved. Eventually, the case was dropped, but before that, Detective McGregor and I talked several times. And? He's tough, and stay out of his way. Ashmore told me that Sharon stands to receive a sizable inheritance. She will get it all. The Hartley Corporation, the real estate holdings, conservatively $20 million. I'm impressed. Unless, of course, she goes to trial and is found guilty. Then, by law, the mistake goes to the next party in the will, which, in the Hartley's case, are several charities. What? I guess I'm just at a real loss over all this. Going out to the house today, seeing everything, Do you think Sharon could have really killed her? I don't know yet. I found it smarter not to trust my first impressions on these things anymore. We're going to alter your medications. We're going to be doing some things differently because you've been making such good progress. Now, I know you're still withdrawn from the outside, but I also know that you can hear and absorb and eventually will remember everything that's going on around you. 
So Sharon, I want you to know you're safe now. And no one's going to hurt you. And we're going to do everything we can to help make you better. And I know you'll get better. I'll be back and I'll stop in to see you later, okay? All I'm saying is that this is taking a lot of your time, and I want you to make sure that your other patients are not suffering because of it. They're not. I don't want to be reassigned, and I won't do it voluntarily. I just thought I'd make the offer. Well, this case is getting a lot of attention. Right now, it's a legal problem. If it drags on, it's going to be a hospital problem. I don't want that. Well, then we may have a problem. It is not my job to worry how long it takes or to worry about what kind of pressure we're under. I am not turning this girl over until she's competent to stand trial. Well, then I hope you're right on this one. Corporation for over 20 years, and I had the pleasure of knowing both Mr. and Mrs. Hartley, and they were both fine people and excellent employers. This girl that killed him, I hope she fries. Or to break in. Is this a residence? Uh -huh. Stay on the line, ma'am. Doctor, do you keep any drugs in the house? No. Anything at all missing? No, nothing. I don't, just don't get it. I think you better have a look back here. What you have in here? Files, my personal stuff. What would anyone want in here? You tell us. Everything is normal, which is good, but you're still lost to us, and that's not good. Okay, if you want me, 
Or you want to talk to me? You just use your call button. Day or night. Even if I'm not here, the people out front know how to find me. Okay? What was that? Sorry. What are you sorry about, Sharon? Where did this come from, Sharon? You want to, please? Jenny, how did this get on Sharon's tray? I don't know. What's the problem? This clipping was stolen from my house. How did it get on Sharon's tray? It could have happened anywhere. The trays are all marked in the kitchen, but nobody really watches them after that. Well, why not? This is a secured ward. I want... Stop by to check on Sharon. The nurse has told me what happened. Are you okay? You think this hospital will survive until you get out of here for a bit? I'd like that. I have no idea why anyone would steal this article from my house. I think it's obvious someone's trying to send you a message through Sharon. Oh, great. What do they want? For me to declare Sharon competent for trial and stand back and watch her end up in the gas chamber? I think that about sums up the feelings of a lot of people in this town. Well, it's not going to happen. What does the death of your fiancé have to do with this? I'm sorry. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. No, no, it's... Uh, okay. Uh, Ted, my fiancé, wasn't supposed to be in the car. I was. I had a patient during my residency named Garrett Walker. And he became obsessed with me. I should have seen it coming. By the time I had his case transferred, it was too late. There were phone calls. Flowers in my apartment. Notes on my windshield in the morning. He became a full-on stalking. Everywhere I went, I saw the guy. He killed your fiancé? Yes. And maybe he was trying to kill me, too. I don't know. I let Ted borrow my car one day. And Garrett was in the back and whatever. Garrett did. Ted lost control. Crashed and the car exploded in flames. They both died in the fire. I'm sorry. It's a lousy thing for someone to bring up to you. Yes, it is. District Attorney Ashmore has issued a statement saying that at this time, there are no new leads in the Hartman case. Gathers. Meanwhile, Sharon Hartman is still hospitalized and unable to give any information. This must be very difficult for you, too. The Hartleys were good friends, weren't they? Yeah. Good friends. This media nightmare going on, it's not going to be easy to defend Sharon. Well, she's their daughter. And they'd want me to do the best job that I can. Just like you.
far. We're having some problems with Mr. Wilkins over here. That's full moon. I feel it all over the ward. Fun's over, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Who is that? You're supposed to be in your room. Mark, go yellow. What do we have on the mother? Well, information on her is very sketchy. She was a very private person. Now, the impressions of people who knew her was that she was devoted to her daughter and husband. And her medical history? There is no medical history for her. At least not in Charlotte. None? Are you sure? I double-checked it myself. She's a very private person. Or maybe she doesn't like doctors. Well, that attitude could be bad for business. Why don't you do a statewide search for her medical record? She has to have seen a doctor at some point in her life. Okay. Anything else on Sharon? Well, I got some of her records from her school. Test scores are in the highest percentile. Grades are always good. But six months ago, that started to change. Teachers were confronting her about possible cheating and reporting hostile outbursts. That's fairly common for a kid at 16. Yeah, I know. I'd write it off, too, but... I got a couple of things from our friendly neighborhood DA. Ashmore? Mm-hmm. That's the guest house on the Hartley estate, or what's left of it. The fire was four months ago. And where was Sharon when it happened? The main house. When the police asked her why she didn't call the fire in, apparently she got hostile. Maybe she didn't see the fire. The police think she started the fire. Yeah, they found her fingerprints all over an empty can of gasoline. The Hartleys had the charges quickly and quietly dropped. Oh, this is a video that was taken from a police car video camera about six months ago. I want you to watch Sharon. Okay, she's getting a ticket. So what's the big deal? I just watch. See, she was completely calm until the cop found the bottle of beer. Hartley's had these charges dropped. Now, we're going to have to expect this to be dredged up by the DA because he's going to want to paint Sharon in the worst possible light. about your patient my patient from the way you've been carrying on with the press i assume she was your patient you know there is such a thing as patient confidentiality patricia well i am getting a lot of pressure on this all the way up to the state legislature 
In case you're interested, that's where a good deal of our budget comes from. This is a patient we're talking about. Well, I wonder if you're not getting too personally involved. After all, you're not the judge and jury here. Well, we don't need a judge and jury. The girl already stands convicted. What if you're wrong? This was stolen from my house. The file itself was slipped under my door. But I have to ask myself why. Do you have any ideas? Perhaps it was somebody who wanted to remind me that your initial diagnoses are not always correct. Oh, come on. We've all had patients we thought were one thing and turned out to be something else. And perhaps Sharon Hartley is not quite what you think she is. Are you questioning my competency? No, I'm not, but the police are. They've requested access time to question Sharon, perhaps under Emma Barbital. That's crazy. She's not ready for anything like that. Well, I think we need to cooperate with them. The hell we do! We need to protect this patient, to be doctors. Don't push this too far, Laurel. I've already given my permission. Oh. And who are they bringing in? Russell Chandler. Chandler, that quack. Well, they choose who they want. Oh, great. Just great. Hey, 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 hey. She walks, she talks, she lives. What's that supposed to mean? It's all over the hospital. You went head to head with brains. I just have a natural way with people. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you hammer them down until you get your way. Yeah, but it comes naturally to me. <laughs> Can I have draft things? So, how's your star patient doing? Uh, no changes, really. A few more verbalizations, but they don't seem to make any sense. Thanks. You know, kiddo, you're going beyond what's expected for this girl. Now, is there any particular reason why? Hell, I don't know. Because she's alone. A lot of people are alone. Is this shrink time? You want it to be shrink time. <laughs> Her parents are suddenly torn away, gone forever. She has no one. Maybe I can empathize with that. And besides, it really gets my back up when someone tells me what to think. Or do. <laughs> oh, hey, the, uh, the insurance company called back. Sharon's mother was seeing a doc. Turns out it was a, an FP in Elk River. Elk River? That's a long way to go to see a doctor. Mm, it's been one hell of a doc. Or you don't really want anybody to know your business. What's his name? Dr. Ainsworth. Older fellow, semi-retired. Hmm. What's this? Glenn Lomond, a single malt scotch, sent over by that guy at the table. Which guy? The guy with the bandana, sitting at the far end. What's the matter?
You're trying to tell me you saw Garrett Walker in a bar tonight. He's dead. I know that. I know that, but I mean, it must be a copycat or something. Or someone who just happened to look like him, or someone who just happened to be wearing the same kind of bandana. I would have thought that too, except he sent a Glenn Loman to me at the bar. Okay. It was Ted's, my fiance's drink. Coincidence, detective? No. I'd say there's a connection. <clears throat> Why the hell would anyone go through all this trouble? Shake you up. Put some pressure on. I know a few people who wouldn't mind if you were forced to drop the Hartley case. Present company included? I've got a lot of respect for you, Doctor. Two years ago, you, uh... You worked with a young boy with ADD. My brother's kid. Everyone else had given up on him. You stuck with him. You helped pull him out. He's in a regular classroom now. I remember him. And we were all... very appreciative. But I will disagree with you on this case. You honestly believe that a teenage girl who is so traumatized she can't speak, doesn't know who or where she is, should stand trial for murder? I think she might be a great little actress. I don't think so. Have there been uh, cases in the literature where someone has faked symptoms like Sharon's and fooled everybody? Yes. There you go. As I see it, she's the only person with a motive, and she's got her bloody hands on the murder weapon. And my job is to see that justice gets served here. So what about this Garrett Walker? <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll assume this is a guy that broke into your house, stole the medical records. And if it is a copycat, your safest course is to assume he is Garrett Walker. Wait a second. The, the real Garrett Walker tried to kill me. Then you could be in some real danger. So I dropped the case in my... Problems disappear. I won't be forced out. Then I'll do everything I can to protect you. Progress note on Sharon Hartley, patient number T1623, 5.40 p.m. Among a few pages of scribbled drawings in the day room, there was some repetitive writing. She had written, don't see, don't tell, don't see, don't tell, at least 200 times. When I questioned her about this, she became agitated, then violent. It took several staff members to subdue her. She was then taken to the quiet room, placed in soft restraints, and sedated. I can't help but feel there's something here we haven't yet touched upon. And what that is, I don't know. I believe she is trying to communicate through the repetitive writing. Don't see what. Don't tell what. I'm sorry you had to wait. Are you ready for dinner? Oh, there's been a slight change of plans. A colleague got a grant at Hopkins. I should make an appearance at the party. Do you mind? I love any party that doesn't involve me. Where are we going? Oh, well, you'll have to follow me with your car. I'll need mine in case I get beeped. How's Sharon? Well, we had a little setback today. Anything serious? 
I don't think so. It's just I've been very encouraged by the progress. This is quite a layout. Is this all Hartley offices? We use about seven floors. We lease the rest out. Oh, I'm impressed. How much of this will go to Sharon? Most of it. You remember the first officer at the Hartley house said that he saw a guy running away from the house towards the woods? Yes. Well, they found a small knife in the woods next to the footprints. The police had traced it back to Danny Fisk. So who's Danny Fisk? Used to work for the Hartleys doing handiwork, on and off for a few years. Do you know him? A little. You got him to do a few scrapes as a juvenile. He's no stranger to the police. So have they been able to talk to him? Well, that's just the problem. Danny's disappeared. So what is your connection to all of this? I see you've brought Frank. We were supposed to meet to talk about Sharon. All right. Hey. Doctors slept with their nurses in the 70s, their patients in the 80s. Looks like we've stooped to lawyers in the 90s. You know, I think that you're delusional and should seek professional help. <laughs> My professional observations? I'm just watching the two of you out there. Which are? He's falling in love. <laughs> Give it a rest, Davies. Hey, I'm right about these kind of things. As usual, you're immersed in your work, not taking care of Laurel. I say, you go over there, Frank has a drink, you have a drink, and you repeat that as necessary until you reach a state of true romance. And if that fails, just, uh, we'll just settle for an inebriated approximation. Yes, doctor. Sorry about dinner. Oh, forget it. It was fun. You can have dinner anytime. Can we? Yeah, we can. Get some rest. How about a brandy? Uh, yeah, sure. Make yourself at home. Thank you. I just don't know why this is happening. Maybe I should have listened to the police. Drop the case? Yeah. I mean, what's happening? I mean, why would anybody go so far? You're not going to drop it, are you? No. Good. I hope. Are you all right? I don't know. Laura, why don't you spend the night here tonight? Uh, no, Frank, I couldn't ask you. No, no, no. You take the bedroom, I'll take the couch. The couch and I are old friends. It would make me feel better. You'll be safe here. What do you say? Are you sure? Positive. All right, then. Good. Let me get the room ready. This is 
Dr. Rains. We just received a copy of the Hartley autopsies from the police. Apparently, Mrs. Hartley was pregnant, end of the first trimester. The police are now calling it a triple murder. I just thought you should know. Hi, this is Laura O'Connor. I have an appointment with Dr. Ainsworth that I'd like to move up. Um, I'll call back. Thanks. Patient Sharon Hartley shows no improvement. Learned today that her mother was pregnant. Question any connection between the pregnancy and the change in Sharon's personality first noted six months ago. I can't get anyone to talk about this family. A real sense that if I scratch beneath the surface, it won't be too pretty. Sharon's mother never saw a local physician. She went to a Dr. Ainsworth in Elk River, a hundred miles away. Why? Hiding something? Or did she just like her doctor? Hoping Ainsworth has some answers. Horrible. Just horrible. I read about it in the papers, like everyone else. I hope the drive up wasn't too bad. Well, not too bad. Just awful far to go to see your doctor. I can't disagree. How long was Allison Hartley a patient of yours? Oh, she was always a patient. She was born here. Family lived just down the street. She went on seeing me even when she moved to the city. Did you ever treat Sharon? Uh, only a few times, and that was years ago. I remember there was something wrong with her ear, and I recommended she see a specialist. Mrs. Hartley refused, and I never saw the girl again. That seems strange, considering Mrs. Hartley's devotion to Sharon. What did you say? Well, just that I'm surprised to hear her reaction to that. I mean, from everything I've heard, Mrs. Hartley was a loving parent. Is something wrong? Alison Hartley was one of the most hateful women I've ever known. She was cold, manipulative, even cruel at times. But her feelings for Sharon. Oh, she hated children. She didn't even have time for her own daughter. You, you have to excuse me, but I... Heard differently. Let me tell you. I oversaw several abortions for her over the years. She could hide things in public. She was a consummate actress. Was there any physical abuse? Oh, no, nothing like that, but... She was manipulative and clever, and there was thought behind everything she did. You mentioned abortions, yet when Mrs. Hartley died, she was pregnant. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. When I became aware of the pregnancy, I was surprised because Mrs. Hartley had told me that sexual relations with her husband had ceased years before. Are you saying that this pregnancy might have been the result of an affair? She admitted it and said it was over. Then she said something quite odd. I remember her exact words. She said his usefulness had come to an end. Sharon's behavior first became erratic about six months ago. Do you think she could have known about the affair? Oh, it's possible. Family secrets are rarely secret. Laura, where have you been? What's the matter? Look, Ashmore's got Chandler down here to interview Sharon. Today? Yeah, they're willing her down now. Come on. Oh. Dr. O'Connor, we'd almost given up on you. You know Dr. Chandler? We've met. 
protocol states that you're supposed to go through me for this. We tried, doctor, but no one could reach you. So Dr. Raines made the arrangements in your absence. Mind if I stay to watch my patient? I was hoping you would. Let's proceed, doctor. I'm going to administer a drug that's going to relax you. After it takes effect, I'll ask you a few questions. All right, Sharon, I want you to close your eyes and picture a restful scene. Something peaceful. A beautiful lake. Snow falling. Just relax. Close your eyes. You need to give this a little time. You're going to be feeling very calm, very peaceful. Just relax. She's not ready for this. Just watch. Sharon, you're at home. A home in the country. Your home. You're inside the home. With your family. They're all there. Aren't they, Sharon? Your father? Your mother? Aren't they? Where are your parents? Sharon, where are your parents? No. No. What? No. should be okay. It seems she took an overdose of medications before your little interview. Overdose? Where'd she get it? That's what I'd like to know. Aren't your drugs inventory? They are. One of the orderlies uh, thought maybe she was trying to steal some medications, but everything's accounted for. How long is she going to have to be in the recovery room? Oh, we'll probably send her back upstairs tonight sometime. I'll get someone stationed outside the door till then. Yeah. Look like you could use some fresh air, Dr. O'Connor. Why don't we take a walk? I believe it was deliberate. She knew she would be forced to talk under the anabarbital. Overdose. Possibly kill yourself to avoid it? I just don't buy it hard to die of an overdose in a hospital. Best of care immediately available. She'd be out of that ward in two, three years, collect those millions, and no one could touch her. You honestly believe that this girl, acting on her own, killed her parents in cold blood? I don't know that, which is why I want a trial. There's also the possibility that she may not have acted on her own. You have other suspects? No, no. But no one's seen the handyman with Fisk since the murders. There are others who had motivation. The company lawyer, Frank Bowden, for one. That's a very serious accusation. I'm not suggesting that he's a suspect. I'm just saying he had motivation. What would Frank Bowden possibly have to gain from the deaths of his two closest friends? A year ago, my office investigated complaints 
against the Hartley Corporation by several partners who suspected company funds were being diverted. Major money. Bowden was considered the chief suspect. Did he? I don't know. McGregor and the others investigated, but at a point in time, everyone stopped talking and the complaints were withdrawn. I assume some kind of settlement was reached. But in Bowden's defense, Hartley obviously still trusted him, kept him on his full counsel. Are you investigating Frank Bowden in connection with this case? No. I'm just taking a note of everyone besides Sharon that might have had motivation. I'll keep in touch. me you were investigated for embezzling funds i'll catch up with you later tomorrow this is not the place no, yes it is i want the truth now come over here the truth is they were just trumped up rumors by another firm it was nothing and why mcgregor went after hartley i'll never know why didn't you tell me more about allison hartley what kind of person she was how she treated her family well i don't know what you've heard she could be difficult, but she could also be very charming. Were you aware that Mrs. Hartley was possibly having an affair? Was pregnant at the time of her death? No, I didn't know that. Are you sure, Frank? Is there anything else you're not telling me? Laurel, I think you're overreaching here. And I think it's time you face the facts of this case. Just what are the facts, Counselor? I can't find a scenario that doesn't place Sharon's finger on the trigger and knowing what she's doing at the time. You think she's acting. You think she's planned out this whole thing. Well, I'm not sure. But from what I know of Sharon over the years, I think she's capable of just about anything. What are you capable of, Frank? You know, if you have an ounce of decency left, you should ask to be removed as Sharon's legal guardian. Call it, I don't know conflict of interest. Uh, thanks for meeting me. No problem. I talked to the sheriff. You got free access. Go anywhere you want. Thanks. Uh, you might be interested. A uh, hospital worker identified Danny Fisk, the Hartley handyman, from a photo. He was at the hospital the morning Sharon overdosed. Have you talked to him? Can't find him. Uh, is that where the guest house used to be? Mm-hmm. Nice piece of work. You think Sharon burned it down? I don't have any doubt about it. I understand Mrs. Hartley used it as a kind of retreat. That's right. I keep thinking if she was having an affair, was having it in there, and Sharon knew that, well... Enraged at Mommy's infidelity, so she burns the place down. That's what I love about shrinks. No offense. Why she did it doesn't matter. There's not a damn thing in the world to justify shooting your own parents with cold blood.
Good afternoon. Nice to have some company out here. Anything I can help you with? No, I just thought a walk around might clarify a few things. Door's open. You got the place to yourself. Are you coming in? Ah, uh, you go ahead. I prefer it out here. Post-traumatic reactions? Sheriff? Hello? Sheriff? Okay, doctor. I'm sorry to scare you. I don't know. I'm okay. I heard a noise. I thought there was someone in the house. Yeah, I had to check out back. I thought I saw someone and I heard you calling. Everything okay, doctor? from the overdose. Did you ever hear of post-traumatic reaction? Funny. I found a book today in your room at home. A psychiatric book. That section was underlined. I have a court hearing tomorrow, Sharon. They're going to ask me what I think. Are you the frightened, disturbed little girl I think you are? Or did you plan the whole thing? Did you wait until your parents were relaxing in the living room and then shoot them in the back? Is that how you did it? I can't help you unless you help me. You've got to talk to me and talk to me now. Yeah. 
Anything up? Yeah, we have a Q5 minute visual check on Hartley Girl. I'm going on a break. Maybe you can see how she is? Tell me, I'll come immediately. We'll end it now. Sharon, just tell me. I want it to be over. What, Sharon? What do you want to be over? Everything. I want my father, my mother. I want to go home. This isn't your fault. Sharon, don't, Sharon! Police, Bob and Officer Hickman. Uh, yes, Detective McGregor, it's an emergency, please. Frank Bowden. Mr. That's right. Something wrong? Yes. Sharon has managed to escape from the board. What? The police have been contacted and they're looking for her now. Thank you. Is it Danny Fisk? That's his ID, sir. Yeah, that's our Danny. He was shot once through the head. Now, let me show you. There's some stuff inside. What do we got? Well, there appear to be some medical files, and uh, looks like a wig. Can you get yes, some shots of this? Yes, sir. How long since we got the report of the Hartley girl escaping from the hospital? Uh, a little more than an hour. And how long since this shooting? Less than that. Got it. When you locate McGregor, you tell him to call me immediately.
Hello, Sharon. Would you please talk to me? Sharon?
5.30 this morning. She's out of surgery now and is expected to make a full recovery. We heard she was shot by Detective McGregor. That's entirely speculation at this point. Excuse me, Mr. Ashmore. Excuse me. It is not speculation. I saw Detective McGregor shoot Sharon Hartley last night after he set the Hartley house on fire in an attempt to kill Sharon and me. Detective McGregor also admitted that he killed both of the Hartleys. Oh, uh, Dr. Okay, Honor, just one more question that in right now. Dr. Honor, 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 Dr. Hon